Hey guys, Mike here. So today we're on a job where we're going to do a stampable overlay. So the floor is in pretty rough shape in there. The first thing we got to do is put some self-leveling down just to level the floor out. It has quite a slope. I think it was an old garage floor with a center drain before. So we're going to use some of Sacrete's. Right there, some of Sacrete's fast setting self-leveling resurfacer just to get the floor level. And then we can do the stampable overlay. So let's go inside. Let's go inside and take a look real quick. Now this is where we're at right here. Here's the floor drain. You see that. So that was the old garage. It's all sloped for that. So we'll get this floor nice and level with the self leveler. Then we can come back and do our stampable overlay over that. So this is the project for today. So to prep this, basically all we had to do for this is we had to just lightly grind it. And what that did was it cleaned it. Plus it also gave us a good surface profile for the self-leveler to bond to. Now what Dan and I are doing now is because this floor was so out of level, we were going from about an eighth of an inch thick to about an inch thick in areas is we're setting those little screws to the height we want. So we'll drill in, we'll set those screws, we'll level them up or down using the laser, put them right to what the level we need it at. So as we dump the self-leveler out, I have something to go by. And you can see we're putting them about every three to four feet because this floor was had such a slope to it to that drain. We want to make sure that the self-leveler gets really level. Now, if this floor was just, you know, in rough shape, but it was fairly level, and we only wanted to put about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch over the whole thing, then I could just use a gauge rake, and I wouldn't have to set any screws like this. It would gauge rake and self-level out pretty good on a floor like that. But when you have one that is so out of level like this, you've got to have some type of uh, system to go by as you level it. Now what I'm doing is I'm mixing my primer. Sacrete has their own primer that you brush down before you put the self-leveler down. And I'm cutting that primer 50-50 with water. That's how you put the, the first coat of primer on. And if, you know, if your floor is not in, if it's not in too bad a shape, then you can just get away with the 50-50 primer. If your floor is really poor, so let's say it's like a broom finish or something, then you want to go 50-50 with your first brush coat and then go a hundred percent primer with your second brush coat just to help fill in all those pores and really help make your self leveler adhere to the existing concrete what happens is if you if you don't use a primer and you try to put the self leveler down you it'll work you'll put the self leveler down but there's a slight chance it may not bond everywhere but even more importantly, you're probably going to develop a lot of pinholes and bubbles in the self-leveler. As the self-leveler sinks down into the pores of the concrete, it, it pushes the air out of those pores and it creates little tiny bubbles. And your self-leveler will end up with a bunch of pinholes and bubbles in it. Versus if you put the primer down, now the primer is going to soak down in those, those capillaries in the concrete and fill those holes and take the air out so now your self leveler is going to just smooth right out really really nice so it's really important you put the primer down and it dries really fast so you don't have to really worry about it drying too fast you can this this will be dry in 30 minutes you'll be able to go right back over it with the self leveler we've got a mixing station all ready to go we're going to mix in the bucket we're going to mix two bags at a time 10 about 10 quarts of water and then we'll carry that right in here and get going so in here we're all good to go we got it ground we got our primer down primers dry we're ready to go now this this is just to level this floor you can, the floor slope to that drain so we just want to level it and then we're going to do a stampable overlay over this which is about three eighths of an inch thick so normally if this if the self leveler was the finished floor then we would have patched all these deep areas first but where it's not the finished floor, we're just going to go right over everything and we'll use the self leveler just to level everything and just we'll see what happens. Sometimes it'll dimple a little bit over these. If it does, then we can fix that before we do the, the stampable overlay. 
So that's Jesse right there on the left. This is actually for him. This is his house. So he's going to help Darren out with the mixing. And I'll be doing all the self-leveling and the spreading as they dump it out. Now make sure you come back for the stampable overlay video. I'll have that video coming out next. So if you haven't subscribed, you know, please go down there and hit subscribe so you'll be notified when that comes out. Now we're going to mix two bags at a time, like I said. So Jesse's going to, we got the water in there first. And we're going to dump one bag in, get that all mixed thoroughly. Then we'll dump the second bag in and mix that all up. And it should look kind of like pancake batter, I guess, coming out. So that's what we're striving for right there. Darren's going to mix for, you know, two or three minutes. Whatever it takes to get it really, really nice. And then those two will carry it in and, and dump it out. You're going to get to see that in a second. And then, you know, you'll see me on the inside. I'm just using, I'm using just like a, what's called a magic trial. It's actually like a little squeegee. That's all I'll be using today just to, to help spread and help the flow. This stuff's pretty flowable, but you still need to help yeah, it out a little bit. Corner be good. And then I'll, just, I'll be using all the heads of those screws as we go along here to, to make sure everything's nice and level. Wow, I mean, look at that. That is that is really, really nice stuff right there. So this stuff is really, really user-friendly is what I found. It's very flowable. It moves around really, really nice. And then we, when you get it to where you need it, it, just, it does just kind of self-level out on its own. You just, need, you just need to bring it, in a case like this where the floor is so out of level, you need to bring it up to the level you need it at. And then, uh, and then just make sure you maintain that level as, as you dump it out. So because, because this floor sloped to a drain so much, I had to keep bringing it back to where I needed it. Now what happened with the second batch was we got just a few little lumps in there. Occasionally that'll happen when, you, when you're mixing a powder with water. You know, you, you, you might end up with a couple little lumps for whatever reason. Um, but you saw how I took care of that. They were just about the size of a small marble. So I just took my hand trial and I just kind of smoothed them out and they mixed right in with the, with the rest of the mix. For the most part, all the batches came out really, really nice. There was just a, a couple batches here and there that had a couple little lumps in it I had to keep smoothing out. Now what I'm looking for right here is I'm looking, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on all the levels of my, my screws and then if I need to pull some back up in to make sure it maintains the right level, I just keep pulling it back up in. As we got to the middle of the floor here, the, the self-leveler was about an inch thick. And then up around the edges, it was about an eighth of an inch thick. So having, having all those screw, hole, uh, screw heads about every three feet just made my job quite a bit easy. Yeah, you can see I'm pulling it back in there as... If I, if I saw any more than just the head of the screw, like if I saw the screw sticking up a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, I would pull some material back up in to level it off right with the top of the head of that screw. A lot of the screws, most of the screws, I, after I got it to where, the, where I needed it, the level I was at, and I, and I knew I was plenty far ahead of that screw, I would, I would take that screw right out. And then a couple of them I couldn't get out by, by hand, so I just left them in and we took them out the next day. It was really not that big a deal, especially since we were going right over it with another product. Yeah, you can see me pulling it back into that middle where it was really, really thick. Now, I'm using spike shoes to walk in this stuff. Those are called shoe-ins. Spikes on them are about an inch deep. I'll have a link for those down in the description if you want to check those out. We use those for epoxy floors, too. I also have a link for that mixer, that Colomix mixer down in the description if you want to check that out. That was, that's one of the best mixers I've ever used. That worked really, really nice. You can see Jesse and Darren are the ones that are doing most of the work. I'm just standing there waiting because uh, the self-leveler pretty much self-levels itself. I just need to make sure it maintained the right height I needed it at. 
as we fill this in, you know, as we get further and further into this, as I look back onto the self leveler, it, it's really smoothing out really nice. That could be the finished floor. So it was just batch after batch after batch, and then uh, that was how we maintained the level. So we got about two thirds of it done. You can see how nice that, that level's out. You can just see the heads of those screws, which is what we want. So it's leveling right out, like there's one right, right there. I don't know if you can see it, but just barely see the heads of those screws. So it's coming out nice and level. Really flows good. Let's watch these guys as they come in here. Right up this end, be good. Yeah. So that's two bags right there. So we'll dump that out like that. And then I'll I'll move it around with my magic trial here. You could use a gauge rake if the floor was more level, but this floor is really out of level. And then I got a screw head right there. I don't know if you can see it. The stuff's almost there. And I'll just level off to those screw heads as I go. I got another screw head there. I got another one there. So I'm just I'm just kind of moving it around, leveling it to the screw heads. And the floor's getting nice and leveled out. We got a little bit left to go. Now you can see this floor was in really, really rough shape. It was, it was uh, scaled and cracked and pitted and just beat, and it really needed a new surface. This is probably the best way to resurface this floor is with a product like Sacrete's Fast Setting Self Leveler right here. And you know, Jesse could have done a number of things over this. He could have tiled it. He could have put wood flooring over it. He could have left the the self leveler itself the way it is and stained it and sealed it um, just it, you know there's a number of applications you can do once you get the floor level like this but this this was actually a really easy process and if we would like I said earlier in the video if we were gonna maintain this as the finished floor we we could have used this same self leveler to fix those pitted areas first so we would have come in the day before, mixed up a bag, dumped it in those deeper pitted areas, and let it self-level itself in the pitted areas, make, making sure it, it stayed a little high. And then the next day we would have come back and just lightly ground it smooth. And then those pitted areas would have been, they would have been repaired. And then all we're going over is really a nice smooth floor. But what we found out, you'll see here at the end of the video, is when we went back the next day and looked at this, it really, really smoothed out really nice. Even over those pitted areas, there really wasn't any any resemblance of any uh, difference in level, any dimpled areas. It, it smoothed out really nice. I was really impressed with that. <clears throat> I'm working my way right back to the door, and I'm making sure I'm staying down a little bit on that 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 entranceway the breezeway part where Jesse's walking right now because we're gonna end up matching that level with the stampable overlay so we're keeping that down about a quarter three-eighths of an inch I'm stepping out of there now with my shoe ins and then I'll just trial that that last little area level right there and then I'm gonna show you what this looks like up close so you can see how nice this comes out and then I'll show you what it looks like the next day It's amazing just how easy this product is to use. It's uh, it, it, we were really, really happy with how it came out. Look how smooth that is. That's really cool. How yeah, we got it all in, got it all self-leveled. So that's the base for another floor stampable overlay. Everything looks good. Looks like it's setting up all right. So we can come back, give this, we'll give this a day or two, come back and do the stamp with all the way. So be prepared for that. All right, so here we are the next day after the self leveling's down. You can see it cures up nice and white. This thing's really, really smooth, nice and level. So that self leveling works really, really good on something that's not very level. Take a look at that. See how smooth that is right there. Just like a finished floor. So you could use this as a finished floor. You could stain it, seal it. 
You can go over it with tile, wood, whatever you want to go over it with. We're actually going to go over it with a stampable overlay so we can match this floor right here that we did in stamp concrete. That wood plank, so we're going to go over it with a stampable overlay. But the uh, self-leveler works really, really good.